you know, the standard question came up about, oh, what do you do for a living? And he replied, oh, I'm an outdoor instructor. And the response he got, I thought was fascinating. Oh, is that the job where you force people to do things which you don't want to? Hello and welcome to Instructor 101 for outdoor instructors that want to make an even bigger impact on those that they work with. Today I want to have a quick chat about uh, a, well, a conversation that I had with a friend uh, a while ago. We went out to a bar and did the standard thing where I was uh, meeting some friends and then just starting uh, speaking to people who he doesn't know. And, you know, the standard question came up about, oh, what do you do for a living? And... He replied, oh, I'm an outdoor instructor. And the response he got, I thought was fascinating. The response was, oh, is that the job where you force people to do things which you don't want to? And I was like, no. It, kind of, it surprised me a little bit, but it kind of didn't. But it highlighted the idea that outdoor instructors are still seen in this position where we force people to do, do things. And... I'd like to think that's an image which is changing, but I don't necessarily know for sure. Um, because I still get those, you know, the standard questions as, as you'd expect, like, oh, is, uh, do we have to do this? Um, or finding notes in pieces of paperwork from parents or, or guardians or carers and all that sort of thing, where this young person has been reassured that they will not be forced to do anything which they don't want to, whether it's either something out of heights or climbing, because there's a lot of anxiety around this particular thing. And yeah, it's, it's fascinating to me. And I want people to question whether they are perpetuating or fueling this, this myth that outdoor instructors are all mean, horrible people which want to force people to do things which they don't want to, or whether they're actually uh, in a really privileged position where they get to work with people and help uh, be role models and build on confidence and self-esteem and help people to make their own decisions and take responsibility and ownership of those decisions that they make as well. And these are all really interesting questions and hopefully it's the, the latter. But Let's let's have a look at a few arguments for forcing someone to do something. Now, obviously, if it's a safety issue, then yes, absolutely, let's reinforce that and make sure that happens. But that aside, let's think about the the other bits. Okay, so it might be for time constraints. I can kind of see the idea behind that, but then hopefully we would have made decision processes or put things in place where, you know, that shouldn't be an issue or could be avoided for the future. So that's a potential um other little bits as well just to say you got your whole group down the abseil tower and yeah wow you're you're a great instructor because you got every single person down that abseil tower you know fantastic but that's just ego that's not necessarily for the benefit of the group or the individuals in that group so i don't really see the yeah how that benefits them in any way i mean yes i know that there can be times where someone uh, you know uh, instinctively in your mind where you go, well, if I push this person to go down the zip wire, they'll definitely come down with a big smile and a, a sense of achievement from doing that, and they'll hopefully want to do it again. But it's a risk. Um, and in some respects, you've kind of taken away their ability to own their own thought, pro their own decision-making process as well, um, and will attribute some of that success to, to them. But what you will have done is you will have got this person to to think and again fuel this idea that you can't necessarily trust these instructors because they will be betray your trust and force you to do things or surprise you, um, which is not what you want when you're trying to build someone's confidence or build a level of rapport where you want to be able to work with that person again. Um, and encourage people to repeat these sorts of experiences and build on their successes. So, yeah, these are all questions which I just want to, I don't know, provoke a discussion about or help people think about and practice the, the challenge by choice model, um, which a lot of outdoor instructors is taught when, when they first start off uh, within the industry. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you're not uh, fully aware of it, then please definitely look it up online. So challenge by choice. Um, 
And yeah, there's lots of benefits to doing that. But yeah, I just want to get people to think whether they are helping uh, themselves and other outdoor instructors by pushing people and forcing people to do things which they don't want to, or are they the type of instructor which is helping uh, develop people and helping build their confidence and yeah, also building up a level of trust. So yeah, it's just some things to think about, but yeah, take care.